Hello, Elena. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Wow, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's been a few years. Yeah, yeah, and um, and you're back. Anna, you've always been in California, or did you live somewhere else before California? Um, as a child, I lived for 14 years in Japan and India. But as an, oh, wow. as an adult, I've, I've just lived in California. Cool. How was, yeah. well, how was it like living in, growing, is it growing up and living growing in Growing up. Yeah. How was that? Uh, how was that? Um, like, probably the, the best thing in my life in many ways. Um, also challenging. Um, mm. I think. In the States, I definitely, I de like I, I blend in really well. I'm like white and I have blonde hair and I have the mm. same accent as Americans. And, um, but, but growing up in Asia, I, I didn't blend in at all. So, um, mm. so the experience of like being other and different and being really like stared at all the time. I'm, mm. I'm really familiar. I, I'm really familiar with that one. Wow. Yeah. How did it feel like, was it like you felt uncomfortable or, or, or does it make you feel special? I, I'm not sure really how that, right. I grew up with I in the Philippines, like with people like me, right? Yeah, so, so. I think as a little kid in Japan, I mostly felt special. Um, mm. Also, so definitely sometimes uncomfortable people would really like to touch my hair and they just come up and start touching my blonde hair. But I mean, I was, <laughs> I, I was a pretty cheerful child. So I think I took it in stride. But um, in India, it was all my te my preteen and my teenage years. Oh. And um, I was stared at, like kind of like leered at a lot. Um, Gee, yeah. And so that, hard, one, that yeah. one was pretty uncomfortable. But I just got used to doing daily life and discomfort. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Wow. What, do you, what do you say? Like, I think it'd be. I asking, know. I know. I know. It's that's like that, asking yeah. a you know a person in the states who's like, like, like every country has their people that just kind of, they're like, yep, it's awkward. It's like people think of me as different. It's fucking weird. <laughs> uh, like every 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 country, every group of people kind of has people. Yeah, and it's, yep. it's interesting. Yeah, and until I think most people won't understand it until you're in that in, in that situation, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, were your parents like traveling, or were they like in the military? They, or? They're teachers, and they they oh, just like wow. to teach overseas. Yeah, so I I got I got the privilege to go to um, some really high quality international schools, which was pretty great um mm. yep G a great perk <laughs> um, amazing yeah yeah so it's yeah. amazing to grab with international kids and yeah. yeah yeah um awesome it was cool it was really thanks cool. for sharing that yeah um, thanks for asking i don't to, need to you, talk about it very much <laughs> yeah yeah i'm sure it will inform the reason why i wanted to talk to you was I recently saw on social media that you're teaching this course called um, Geomorphology, right? Is it Geomorphology yeah. and the Feminine? Perfect. Yeah, good job. It's such an, it, it, it's such an intriguing um, title because geo, it's like geology, right? And then morphology shapes. It's just an interesting um, juxtaposition of words. So. For someone who's like completely new to this, how would you explain what it is, really? Well, first I would say if someone's completely new to it, that would be everyone in the world because um, oh. it's, it's new. It's just new. Um, Did you invent this? I invented it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't. Oh, this is cool. And I definitely didn't invent the feminine, but I definitely did. As far as I know, I'm the first person to have put the two together. Um, yeah. That's invention. That's invention. Yeah, yeah. It's that would be invention. Exactly. That would be invention. Um, <laughs> yeah. And you said it really well. Yeah, it, like geomorphology. It's the science of land formation processes. Oh, and you yeah. said it really well when you said like G 
geo, geo like geology mm -hmm. and then morphology is like shapes so it's like shapes of landforms and geology like how do landforms look the way they look and why do they look the way they look um okay. and when i say landforms you know you someone might think of like the grand canyon in the united states or like you know, the outback in, in Australia, but really yeah. landforms also encompasses like, the, it's the entire planet. It's all plate tectonics. It's all oceans, ocean basins, mountain ranges, um, everything we see and don't see that's covered by water on the planet is shaped um, by these different forces. Yeah, it's like, it's interesting when you mentioned the hidden ones, because I've read somewhere that the highest mountains are actually under the ocean and and i grew up in the philippines and there's that deep trench i think near us the marianas trench it's so deep that apparently the water at the bottom of it has an extra hydrogen it's like there's like heavy water because of the pressure right it's, it's quite interesting there's so much we don't see underneath so right yep and even what we do see on the surface we only see the surface like right under the surface is is stuff that we don't see. We only see such a small fraction. Um, one of my favorite facts that I'm always fascinated by is that the depth of the Marianas Trench, the depth to surface level is about the same distance as surface level to the top of Mount Everest. Oh. Okay, wow. And so that really gives you perspective of A, how how low that trench is, but also that kind of balance that like what is above is also below. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, yeah. Um, That's so alchemical. It, wasn't that alchemy? Like as above, so below? It's mm -hmm, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I, I think one of the things I find so fascinating about geology and geography is um as you, well almost kind of any science it's like as yep. you dive into it there's so many of the same principles that come up in spiritual traditions and um esoteric traditions are are actually so similar you know yeah uh, yeah 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 it's just like and that keeps popping up all over the place but i think mm. th this world of uh of the study of the earth and geology doesn't really get looked at so much like particle physics and metaphysics and um, mm. these get looked at more uh, yeah. and, and their relation to our, our, our spiritual beings kind of, but I think that the earth has a whole new take on it that I really like. Yeah. And in, in one of the other things I do with this, in this series, I talked with a guy who was studying philosophy and we talked about a bit about that. And the example I told him was, um, do you know, and or it must have been another, there's so many podcasts that it can sometimes get mixed up. But what I remember was, you know, in, in astrology, there's this concept of solar return. Like uh, when you're born and then you're around 27, big changes happen in your life when oh, yeah, that solar amazing. return happens. I'm, I'm in there. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the cool thing is in... Um, neuroscience they're finding out that, that uh, when we are born our neocortex doesn't get fully formed until around that time mm. around our solar return is when we actually become adults so when before that we're not really there yet because the neocortex hasn't formed yet so there could be an, a lot of changes at that time it just happens to, to coincide with what astrology saw before because I think before people saw it differently, but they still saw the same phenomena, if you know what I mean. So I guess that's what you're saying. Right? Yeah. Well, I love that you brought that up because um, I, well, uh, one of the things that I, that I teach in this class, workshop class course mm -hmm. thing um, is, is, in earth science, you study external and internal processes, mm -hmm. and they're called exogenic and endogenic. Exogenic mm -hmm. being like 
um, on the Earth's surface and above. So like the sun, how the sun affects land, how um, water erosion affects land, wind, um, chemicals, but then you have internal processes. So like how the, the internal heat of the earth affects things. Um, yeah. And, and so yeah, it's this idea of like internal and external both having, having their effects and the, the human or the, the, like the, like land. And then in the, the metaphorical comparison, human, we are affected by both, both the external and the internal. Um, but that example too of, of the astrology, it's like, you know, in astrology, they talk about planets because they have such mass having effect on us. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like Mercury moves and um, Venus moves and those energetic beings that are these planets, the way they move, uh, like connects to our systems based on where we were mm -hmm. born, who, who we are, um, and and has a has a has a pull or a, an effect on us, and so that's like an external process. And then you talk about the yeah. the brain and the um, you were saying like the neocortex getting is that what you were saying getting like the neocortex yeah, yeah. In, in in someone's late twenties yeah, it, and it like comes an online process. basically yeah yeah and so it's like who's to say how how much um, do they correlate? Are they both happen? Are the effects of both happening? And um, like, where where do they overlay? But yeah, that the human the human is is getting the experience of both the external and the internal. Yeah, and in in, in, in Gnostic texts, we're kind of the link between spirit and matter, which is quite interesting between the celestial and yeah. So it's this there's a lot there, and and how do you relate it to the feminine? Then so we have the or do you want to say, do you want to expand more on the geomorphology side before we, before you link it to the feminine? Um, that's a good question. I think, I think, yeah, I think we've done a pretty good job explaining what geomorphology mm. is and, and and the super basics. Um, I think, for me, comparing like having this metaphor of um, comparing it to the feminine mm. feels like. Um, One aspect of it is this mm, well, I think okay, so that there's a couple of layers to it, but like you were just saying so, so maybe before you dive into that, maybe to, to others who are not familiar with the language, maybe you could want to explain what feminine is because sometimes that's a, a common I, I think a, a common misconception is just females, right but it's 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 way beyond that the actual sex biological sexes right so if you could maybe give us a background and then yes um, i definitely look at it as beyond just women and men um i think the yeah. word feminine the fem i think the word feminine is so large and so um kind of broadly used that i actually I actually purposefully chose it because it is such a a big word that everyone has their own understandings of. So mm -hmm. although, although I definitely don't identify with the feminine just being inside of women's bodies and masculine just being inside of men's bodies, and I do very much look at the universe as this these balance, well, but having both masculine and feminine energies in it. Yeah. Um, I purposely chose this really large and kind of ambiguous word to allow mm. people um, their own, their own interpretations of it in a certain way. Um, mm. Because what I, the, the metaphor that I'm, that, that I'm working with here is there's like a few different metaphors. And so it's hard to actually just say, I'm using the word feminine just in this context um, mm. because, because one context is that women, like actual women, not, not men and women, but on this planet at this time, women in women's bodies and people who identify as female, um, a lot of the way they interact with the world and a lot of the 
qualities they have and like their mm. their talents and gifts and literally the way they see things and absorb information is um is not is not like what's getting taught at Harvard and Yale, you know? It's not mm. um, it's not what is getting pushed out there on Wall Street and in big tech. It's like the way uh, the yeah. feminine mind operates is more collaborative, is more multifaceted, it's um, less mm. directional, yes, and more encompassing. Mm. So one aspect of this of this course is to to basically say to women and people who identify as female, you're not crazy. Um, the way that you experience things <laughs> and operate is like the same, like, like look at how the earth actually operates. Look at how the, the science of this planet operates because it actually has a lot mm. in common with how you in your own biology, in your own mind, in your own heart operate. Mm. So, yeah, so sense, part yeah. of this class is basically to tell women like, you're not crazy. And here, I'm going to take the best role model that possibly existed, our planet, um, and you <laughs> show you that you're not crazy. And the things that you experience, that's also of this planet. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. a lot of, uh, yeah, like even like season, seasons, changing seasons and also daily uh, even within the day, like in San Francisco, I remember even places have mi microclimate. So that's also happening, right? Totally. With, with the with the feminine, it's like, and that's totally. what makes it really creative and really potent in my in my view. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, and so, so, so you've run a few of these courses now, right? Um, yes, I've done one in person in my hometown, and I've also right. done one online um, with people from all over, and they were great. This is the first time I'll be teaching it just as a weekend workshop, right. so there is a newness to it, which I'm excited about. Cool. And with, with the two ones, what, what have you learned from teaching it? Um. I've, I've learned that the way that a lot of people have been taught uh, geography has, mm. has been very heady. It's been very like brainy and um, not really relatable. So mm. some of the topics that I was teaching on about like plate tectonics and volcanoes, um, the, the, the students in the class <laughs> said that the way I taught about it had it uh, land in their bodies, like like the, there's this embodied teaching of it that wow. they never got in school, and so all of a sudden these kind of foreign and distant concepts of like plate tectonics, earthquakes, all of a sudden they felt like they could relate to it, and they were like, oh, I I get I get how the tension between two plates, like I get that in my body, um, so that was really yeah. cool to. All right. To have, to have people all of a sudden be interested in these topics that before they just got bored by. That's cool. It's a new way of teaching. Yeah, why not? This is an amazing thing, the body. Why not use it to teach concepts, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, and I think that's what happens a lot is like with women and like the fem the feminine inside of all of us that that feminine part of us that. Mm, doesn't really care about lists and it doesn't really care about right or wrong memorizing but it, yeah <laughs> yeah but it but it under like like the, it's very body based you know um, mm. and the fe more feminine people are often very sensitive people you know they can feel feelings and um and i think that often in school we weren't taught in a way that matched that kind of learning which is like mm. feminine learning also. Um, so I like, I really like getting to teach in this way that people like inherently start to connect themselves to what they're being taught. They're like, oh my God, like 
Like all of a sudden rivers and erosion actually relates to me as a human. I, I like, oh, mm. cool. Like I have a personal connection with rivers versus them just being in a textbook. It's amazing. It could be, this could be the way to, you know, there's this, uh, it's always in the news about the apparent lack of women in STEM and maybe it's because the way STEM is being taught is not like this. Maybe if STEM is taught like this, there'll, there'll be more of everyone, you know, learning it. What, what totally. do you think of that? Yeah, I, I think a huge part of, yeah, yeah. A huge, I think there's many facets, many facets to that question. Um, but yes, I do. I think I think yeah. the way STEM is taught, um, and STEM for those of you who don't know, stands for like science, technology, engineering, and mechanics or math, math, or and something mathematics, like that. mathematics, mathematics. Yeah. yeah, and it's this yeah. phrase S T E M that ref like an acronym that refers to all the all these fields, and so a lot of people are like, oh, I'm a STEM major, um, which is like, oh, I, technically I'm a STEM. I was a STEM major. My degree is in geography. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that people with a lot of feminine and especially women often have to kind of contort themselves into learning a mask, a very like masculine subject that's taught in a masculine way. These subjects don't have to be taught this way, but they often are. Um, and it, yeah, it, it 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 takes out of the running a lot of people that don't think like that. Yeah, I guess. If I was going to play devil's advocate, some people might say that it's because that the hard sciences have to be very precise. But I don't necessarily think that be, being precise conflicts with the feminine way. What do you think? It, it, it can be as precise, but from a different way of going about it. And and also sometimes it can be precise. It's it's more, it's worse to be precise than wrong. That to be approximate but right. Do you know what I mean? Like you can be really precise, but you're going the wrong way. Whereas you can <laughs> not be precise, but you're going the right way. So there, there's a, there are two things to this. <laughs> what do you yeah. Think? Well, I I think so much of it is always um, like any any subject matter, any person, anything is going towards feeling whole and complete. And so I think mm -hmm. in a hard science that that body of work, that that science is also going for the feeling of being whole and complete. And that mm -hmm. does require really, really precise things for like astrology and particle physics. Um, but also like Einstein, I think one of the reasons it feels like Einstein has always been so famous is that he he was a very feminine being in, in a lot of ways. And he mm. held both the like precision and these mathematical equations. Um, but he also held a lot of magic and unknowing and feeling open to the universe and being just enthralled and fascinated with it. Like they had a very childlike aspect yeah. to him. And I think he's someone to me that really embodies um, how you can have both and the beauty of having both. And yeah. that these precise equations are helping move towards this kind of open expansiveness that you're genuinely getting curious about. Yeah, and when you mentioned Einstein, I read this book by this physicist who spoke about Einstein that he spent like a few years just bumming around Italy, you know what I mean? And he, he was a patent clerk and he did his um, theories in his own time, you know, he wasn't like a professional physicist as such. And apparently the way he conceived of relativity was, he was thinking, what would it be like to ride light? I think that's how he came up with it. What if I rode this photon and just rode it? And I think that's how you're, oh, if I'm riding it, then, then that's, Time is relative because I'm on it and I'm moving with the light and the rest seems yeah. What so the inspiration amazing. came from that, yeah. I've never I am so glad you told me that. I love that because that to me that really like I think that's such a great story for what I was trying to say earlier of like embodied learning. Like yeah. that's it. You know, Einstein's sitting there like, I wonder what it would be like to ride light. 
okay, if I was riding light, what would that be like? What would that feel like? What would I be seeing? How would time be going? How would light be going? Um, yeah. Th and that's it. It's like, uh, what, a, what a great story. I love that you told me that. I want to read that book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I forgot the title, but I'll send it to you later. Uh, it's such a short book, and he summarized all the on the, the standard model, but in a good way, you know, mm -hmm. in, in a, more stories and stuff. And um, so, what, what have been your what have the students who done your course? What have they what have they been saying about the experience? Their experience. Yeah. Um. One of the things. So, in this course, I tried not to tell people what the metaphors are. Instead, mm -hmm. I tried to teach about the earth and then and then pose questions that allowed the women. At the moment, this class is just for women, but in the future, mm -hmm. it might change that. But so far, it's only been women. And mm -hmm. I would allow them to then make what metaphors they wanted to make. So we did this one example of um, plate tectonics off, off an ocean coast. Because those kind of, those kinds of plate tectonics work differently when there's one plate that's an ocean and one plate that's land, mm. and so I taught them what happens there. Because um, when that happens, volcanoes get formed in a certain way, and um, so we walked through the whole process, and then I had them make a metaphor, and one woman related it to um, motherhood. And she walked through the different steps of the, the plate tectonic process and how those relate to being a mother and the, the, the process of um, motherhood as, as she's seen it in her own life and also as her, friend, wow. like, as, uh, her friends. Um, and another woman compared the process to her soul and how her soul kind of works with things and like plate tectonics, like one going under the other and how that relates to um, in her soul things shifting, and then mm. once something shifts in her soul, it making its way out through her actions and her words, and that being like a, vol a volcano. Um, and, and so this process of plate tectonics and magma being, mm. um, being soul work that, yes, that makes its way out through through how we interact with the world and um another woman has been studying skin and um two different women one has been studying skin through chinese medicine and one has been studying skin through um like being a, becoming an esthetician so kind of like western and science mm. uh, perspectives of of the body and skin and they both compared plate tectonics to that that situation of plate tectonics to how something happens deep in our skin and then makes its way out into like our pores um mm. and comes out so it's been really interesting that the different metaphors that these women are making to, for, yeah, for and, I love it. and around them yeah i love it because it's coming from their lived experience i i, I get a sense now why you're saying they appreciate it because instead of just understanding uh, here's the textbook just learn that they're actually owning it the, the concept and then i don't know like digesting or internalizing it and then giving it back to you from their life stories that's amazing i think that's the only way to really know you've learned something is if you've owned it right and I, it seems that these women have owned the concept right of, exactly this scientific exactly. this scientific yeah. uh, geological reality yeah it's also cool that it's also um a commingling of objective reality and subjective reality that's really cool right. this is really yes. yes yes and i think that for me that's yeah. also a huge piece of this whole thing is like we kind of touched on it at the beginning but as above so below like alchemy we were saying and um often above is considered masculine like the sun um consciousness uh, and feminine is often uh, the moon, darkness, um, the intuition. And if you, if you, if you take that out into like a, you know, cosmology, 
the the earth then is very feminine um mm. and so to me it's like recently we've gotten really interested in out there well for a long time we as humans we've actually really been so interested in out there and out there and out there and we we actually know more about the stars in many ways than we do about the core of the earth like what what chemicals and what particles are actually in the core of the earth and to mm. me that really sums up a lot of this kind of we've been going out towards the masculine and out towards the masculine and recently uh with like all the shit that's been going on on the planet and in, in a lot of different spiritual and personal growth worlds a lot of people are starting to go like wait a second wait a second like what's going on in here okay wait let's get more curious about inside and let's get more curious about intuition and the earth and what's actually happening on the earth um so i think on this big level too it's like you so off i i so often have heard this phrase like oh we're spiritual beings in a human body and often people then are like let's look to the spiritual and i'm like hold on like let's look to the, let's look to the human like like let's yeah. actually let's go, let's, let's go the other direction um not because it's more important just because it's like it's it's a it's a a balancing act um it's like a pendulum swinging you know and the and 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 yeah. the, we're getting to the we're getting to hopefully closer to the middle um and so so that's another aspect of this whole thing for me is like okay okay like let's focus back on the the human and the earth and what can we learn about here now our bodies like the biology of the thing kind of yeah and that, that, that's what attracted me to inner alchemy as well because there's this um um school of thought that the the way to be enlightened and to be liberated is to escape the incarnation right so if, if you've escaped the karma of coming back again then you've made it but the alchemists have another view we want to transmute matter we want to turn lead into gold which is a metaphor for turning all the messy reality into something that's as good as the celestial sphere and and if you think about it like even Isaac Newton who's like the who came up with the loss of the basic laws of physics and invented calculus was a full-on alchemist right and few people talk about that but he actually spent more time doing alchemy and he just did the, this physics on the side it's quite fascinating but people just dismiss that a chemical side of him but we don't know how that may have if he didn't double in that then the other things he did may may not happen right so again that's again that's what you said the balance right and what if he just specialized in into math maybe he wouldn't do as good as yeah that's what makes him singular i think and i think sadly that's what we're losing now with hyper specialization right where we're being forced to look just this yeah <laughs> just and I like what you're doing. We're mixing different stuff without losing the rigor of science. And yeah. Yeah. I, I like that you say that I've been on this, um, this kick of listening to history for the last yeah. year. I've just been like, well, the only audio books for the most part that I'm interested in listening to are really, really, really long history books. Um, mm. But I, I think some part of my conscious and subconscious is just so hungry for context of where we are as people mm. in this mm. long, in what we know about humanity. Um, mm. And I don't even know if there's, I don't think there's like a specific answer I'm looking towards, but the looking for, but the more that I, I'm absorbing and the more that I'm getting, it's just, it really highlights for me that there's never been a period of time where we had it together, where, oh, that was, that was the good time. And, oh, we're, we're losing it now. Or, oh, things are going to shit now. It's like, it's so, it's so multifaceted. Like it's, mm. it's so multifaceted and it's so, 
fascinating that on so many levels we can be growing and also like, um, you, you know, like also going backwards um, at the mm. same time but in all, in all periods of civilization that I have gone through, um, you know, like Egyptians, Romans, uh, like Mesopotamia, um, yeah. you know, like over in China and Mongolia, like yeah. everywhere that I've been looking at, every period has has this both these qualities, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah so it, it, it it's like the constant lead into gold, and it's always it's always ha it's just always moving its little things. Um, so it, it, it's it's fascinating. It's just fucking fascinating. Yeah, and, and back to alchemy, one of the alchemical processes is they separate things into its components and then they combine them. So maybe that's like history. We, we separate stuff and now, okay, now I know that. And then you then, then go, oh, I'll just take one. And then you combine it. And I think, I don't know, but I have a feeling we live in such an interesting time right now. So a lot of my, a lot of people I know, some of them really long for the past, but I think we're in really interesting stuff now because we're actually at the cusp of really understanding the, some details of evolution and genetics and, and uh, physics, which is exciting, but you're right. At the same time, I think we forgot the humanity, you know, the- Totally. The, we know the technicals and we forgot, hang on, we haven't really yeah. evolved from, from, from being primates in terms of fighting each other. And I don't know, in terms of tribalism, it's making a comeback and all these things. I, I guess we need to integrate all of that. Like, like the sciences, like you were saying, you know, in, in alchemy, they take, they, um, they separate things and then they put they them still, together. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like, Although, although a, a part of me gets annoyed at all this, the science and the age of reason and, you know, um, if it's not a fact, it doesn't exist. And like, I don't believe it unless it's proven to me through the scientific method. And there's a mm. lot of things about that that are very obnoxious to me as a more intuitive person. But uh, mm. at the same time, through all that, we have, we have pulled out these um, brilliant things that I think mm. you were just saying. Now we do. We get to take. We get to take this thing, this, these things that we've pulled out, and we get to combine them with other things. And it's like yeah, in a more conscious way, instead of yeah. being victim of our DNA or our conditioning, we could be like, boop, zoom out, and what, what life do we want to create? Right? What? Yeah. I think we're at that meta level now, which is interesting. Yeah. Sometimes I think it's like, it's not good or bad what happened. It is just what happened. And, um, and I can see both the good and bad in it. And it's like, it is what it is. It is what it is. This is what we have now. Um, like what do we do going forward kind of thing? Um, yeah, but yeah, not to, not to, um, belittle or put down the bad aspects. It's like, no, we have to fucking deal with all this shit happened. But um, yeah. but it happened. It happened. We didn't, you know, it didn't not happen. It happened. We, you know, we got so interested in science, we forgot about anything moral. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, now what do we want to do about that? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm actually reading uh, the the book by the Theory of Everything by Ken Wilber, and he talked about the integral theory, and I like the way he mixed. Um, developmental, like as, as a child, as humans develop from baby to adult, humanity is the same. It's not that, of course, when you, when I was a child, I, I did things that I wouldn't do as an adult, but that doesn't mean when I was a child, I was flawed. I was just perfect in being totally. like in my terrible twos. I needed to be in my terrible twos because that's the developmental level. So I'm, I should, in fact, apparently if I didn't, if I, wasn't terrible when I was two, then it, that will affect my future because I won't be as assertive when I grow up. So maybe humanity was going through that and they did have several stages. And I think now we're in the orange, no green. And then orange is the on the rational, green is more on the postmodern side. 
and then we need to the next level would be the more integ integral level level mm. where, where we integrate everything mm. and i guess that's where we're coming through mm. and i guess to bring it back this meta thinking back to you how did you what inspired you or how did you come up with this was it like you dreamt of it or did you kind, kind of actually yeah, yeah. yeah um i i was laying in bed uh, late at night, and I, I had been reading this book that I really love, and um, it's called If Women Rose Rooted, and it's by a woman named Sharon Blackie. Rose Rooted, okay. Mm -hmm. It's really great, and she talks about um, a lot of Celtic myths mm. and um, how they relate to the land and how women throughout history have often been the ones that connect humanity to the land and mm. by separating humanity from its feminine side we've also separated humanity from the planet and from like mm. actual earth um and she she's just this really great storyteller and she brings in a lot of her own life story and i was laying in bed um kind of just like I guess in a certain way, really, really relating to what she was saying and also wondering as a young woman myself, like, where's my life going to lead? And what, like, clearly I want to, you know, clearly these ideas matter to me and I want to do something with them, but um, nothing I see out there pulls me enough to like join that. Like I've gone through a lot of phases of, mm. you know, getting behind different things. Um, and it's it's like left my body. Like I'm no longer interested in getting behind other, I mean like I wanna support other causes, but more as a participant, not so much like mm. maybe my career is supporting this thing. Mm. Um, and not even on a mental level, it just kind of like in a body level, it just kind of left yeah. me. And so mm. I've, been, I've been curious and I've kind of been praying for like what, you know, what is unique to me? What, like how do, what can I, what can I do? What, what do I want to do? And I was laying in bed and literally it felt like the idea just kind of hit me. Um, wow. so I didn't come up with it. Like, um, you know, like I think it's, it's definitely unique to me in the sense that I have a background in physical geography. So it's like, I, I, that, that way of seeing the world is, is in me, but, mm. um, but this this connection of wait a second okay how does that actually relate to us as women and anyone with this idea of the feminine um, mm. that it just kind of like midnight just landed boom boom Perfect. yeah and then it was like well I have to I have to do something with it it was one of those things like oh it's like okay that's not one of those like it's like if I let that one go I don't think the universe is going to be really happy with me. So yeah, I, your diamond will be go. No, we have to do that. Yeah, first time I, go, I guess I guess I'm I'm guessing I'm going to teach a class on that now. And um, but it very much came from this this place of like I don't have the answers. I'm not the teacher in the sense of I'm not a teacher. I'm more of a guide on this one. Like yeah, it it, it flows through you. It, exactly, it like exactly. It, I don't I don't just, have the answers. I just have a piece of the puzzle that that would be a good one for a lot of us women to learn to get strength from to be like oh yeah okay no um i'm not i'm the way i do experience things is very valid and like i don't have to second guess myself um like like i i think a, if if a lot more women can can get the second guessing removed from from them um, I think our planet stands a better chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, so, yeah. Because you have more boom. Yeah, and, yeah. And I guess one thing I could say as well is I've also been fascinated by reading about the new the passion economy, and also that the best way to be earning a living is to be yourself. Yeah, because you because you have no competition, right? Because your experience is unique. Even if people try to copy, it won't be the same because they don't have the same 
experiences that you had and that makes you be able to relax and really fulfill and channel this vision without the old method is we make ourselves cut parts of ourselves to fit a mold in in an organizational hierarchy right i need to fit in i don't totally. know as a salesperson or as a marketer whereas what you're doing is you're bringing your whole you when you're doing this right it's not like you have to bring all of yeah. elena to do this right and 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 people get more out of it than if you're just i don't know in a in a big institution where you only teach this according to this curriculum written by the board of education <laughs> it's, it's a totally different kind yeah i love that you say that that's um you, you said it so eloquently i think one of my personal biggest prayers for myself over the last five years has been to not leave any part of myself behind Mm. Uh, but it comes from that exact idea that like when we have all parts of ourselves we have as much power as we could have um and yeah i like i like that you said that i think i think that there is great beauty in um the, i've never heard that phrase before but the passion economy of being yourself um mm -hmm. and mm, I also, it's an interesting time because a lot of people do work in companies and do work in structures though. Um, and so what, what is the place in like, how can you be all of yourself and also respect, um, like respect a container and how can it feel, you know, maybe not confining, but like, mm. oh, just, oh, this is what is. Okay, like these are the rules of this game when I work at this government agency and how can I also be me? Um, and I think we're at a really interesting time where people's individuality is being really appreciated yeah. more. But, but yeah, even even in that. Don't match, a life, don't match that. Yeah, how, do you, how to do that. Yeah, but even then, in the, even I like that you point that fact that not everyone can do what you're doing because some people need to work within organizations, but also the organizations, I think it's starting to change now because the world is so complex now. There's so much, it's global. There's so many things, things are changing all the time that actually pushing all the decisions up to management no longer works because by the time it gets up to that, the it's situation very, has changed. Just, like, um, What's that word like disjointed from reality <laughs> yeah it's far removed so yeah. i think what, what what people are doing now is pushing it to the front so that if you empower people who are at the front lines then they can make the decisions without going back the chain because totally. they know what's going on you just need to i suppose give them the give them the power the knowledge the the tools so that they could do decentralize the decision because I've, I've worked in big corporation and that's a problem sometimes like a lot of people are waiting but the bottleneck is sometimes because we're waiting for a sign off and but that person in that position it's impossible for someone to handle so much you know what i mean like one person like, totally all these things. Yeah, yeah yeah i i think it seems like a lot of our systems were built in this hierarchical Factory. way yeah which is I mean, to, like to very much oversimplify it, more of a masculine way, um, mm. and that yeah, this like different types of systems are going to thrive in in our modern world, um, and we're in yeah, we're in these in this shift where like clearly what's been going on isn't really working anymore, and things get bottleneck as you were just saying. But what what is the new system? What are the new systems? And I think. For me, I have a lot of faith in our, um, in our like, kind of just like our biology, like what, what's been mm -hmm. encoded in us that we might not even realize. And so a lot of my hope is with women um, who have a lot of these feminine qualities that I think the world is lacking to, to by 
by having more role models for women to to get um, to get encouragement to really be themselves, like we were talking about, that although they might not rationally have the answers, by women just being themselves more, what's encoded in our DNA and how we work, which is more collaborative systems, will come to the forefront and uh, also that there's not th there's role models out there for women, but um, I I personally figured out that to me the earth is this huge role model um, of yeah. how a lot of these things can work. And so um, yeah, so this idea this idea that that like it's encoded in us these I, these new systems like the the answers are within us. Um, yep. And especially in these more feminine qualities of a lot of us. And so it's like, how can we get those voices out there? And it, it takes a lot to say those things when the rest of the world looks at you like, I'm sorry, what? You wanna have, <laughs> you wanna have the employees make the decisions? Um, don't you think that's <laughs> ridiculous? Or like, I'm sorry, you wanna have a collaborative process where we, we all, <laughs> we all share something and together that shows us the next answer. Like, don't you think that's a bit ridiculous and time consuming? <laughs> like, it takes so much to continually trust your gut and be like, yeah, yeah, I don't know how this works. Um, it may not make sense, but yeah, I do think that is true and I am going to go forward with it. Like that's a fucking yeah. humbling experience to do, you know? Yeah, and and learn this learning from nature and the body, because um, you, you talked about collaborative decision making is slow and not efficient. But nature is not efficient. Nature wasn't designed to be because if nature was efficient, we'll have one lung, one kidney. Do you know what I mean? Because if 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 economists designed <laughs> humans. They'll just skip on everything, but nature is the opposite. It creates lots of stuff. Totally. It's superfluous. Yeah, yeah so it's, that it's if nothing comes, we can handle it. So it overproduces. It doesn't waste anything. Nature doesn't waste anything. Yeah, everything's uh, used. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and nature constantly, constantly wants to evolve and grow. Constantly. Yeah. Um, In fact, it's the death of nature is when things stop and become static and fixed and yeah and, and i guess that's where the fear comes in when, when people are in fear they just want to freeze stuff it's a bit like when you're a prey and the predator comes it just freeze it, and people but if you're you're right when you're confident you can just go through and be yourself and yeah yeah <laughs> this is really cool yeah. you can say and it's hard to do when you have a two hundred thousand dollar a year tech job on the line three kids at home and a husband who just got diagnosed with cancer you know yeah. then it's hard then it's hard to sit in a boardroom and say something that uh goes against what a lot of people might think mm. so, like, I think but it can work it can work. No, it can totally work. I think there's just, sometimes there's this way that I think we, we can say like, oh, wouldn't it be great if we all did this? And it's like, yes, it would be great. And there's also this aspect of reality that yeah. doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. It just means it's, it's hard. I, I get that yeah. it's hard. Um, but I mean, we can have little victories and I'll just share one with you. Like I know someone here in Australia who is now in a corporate world, corporate position. And in her team meeting, she introduced check-ins. Like before they start the meeting, is how are you feeling? And people loved it. You know, like yeah. it's like why do not people use that so that people can land in the meeting? And then yeah. it's simple, right? But we learn it outside the corporate world. But then when you bring it, and then at first people said, "What's she on about?" But after a while, they kind of like it. Now. I believe it. So just hope, slow, slowly but surely, right? Slowly but surely, yeah. It's always. Uh, it's always, it always feels like a victory when something new makes it into the corporate world, you know, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I remember I was buying my car and I was debating between a Subaru and something else. And, um, 
I found out that Subaru has always had really good health insurance, has always had health insurance and benefits for all of their um, LBGT employees, like the whole time they've existed. And I was just like, oh, great. I'm going to buy my car from Subaru. Like, I'll pay the extra money. Like, oh, that corporation, you know, takes care of its has, people. Has right. some values that matter to me. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll pay more. Cool. Yeah. And I think that's becoming more more prevalent now. People are paying more for good organic local produce. Yeah, it, it, there's a wave and, and people are, yeah, even in my product design, we're being taught how to design a circular economy to avoid plastics. It's really cool that it's it's filtering. It might take a while, but at least now in even in universities, they're starting to teach all this sustainability stuff. And, yeah. And not just yeah. uh, cool. Um, maybe I could we could show your website. Let me see if I can. Oh sure. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Alina ray r-a-e dot com cool let me see do you see it yeah that's it yeah so this is your website yeah Please. yeah so the home page yeah, for the course and then the other tabs are my other stuff so if people want to do the course they can just go here and register Yes, yes, and it's in Oakland, and it's August 10th and 11th, which is a Saturday and a Sunday. And yeah. uh, even if people don't live in Oakland, it would be great if they shared it with people who do live in California. And hopefully hmm. I'll be doing an online version of this class again as well. Cool. This is cool. Awesome. It's been great you sharing this with us. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say for this? I would like to do another one, maybe down the track when you've done more classes and we see how we go. But yeah. for now, is there anything, anything else you want to say? I think really, I just wanted to say, I really had a great time talking, Oliver. It's, it's fun to catch up this way. Um, yeah. It's, it's easy to get on a phone call and how are you and how are you? But yeah. like, this, this is more of the meat of it. Um, and it's so fun to get to have someone to bounce off astrology and alchemy and um, geology and particle physics. It, yeah. I feel my, my mind uh, feels really satiated talking with you. Yeah, and likewise, I really enjoyed that this is so feminine. It wasn't yeah. structured, but it worked, right? It, <laughs> we were just feeling each other, what, what the next thing to say is, but... That's what humans are. We're responsive, autonomous agents, right? We're responding to each other, and that's the way it should be. <laughs> All the time. All the time. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. And see you in the next one, and enjoy. OK. okay. Thanks, Oliver. Enjoy living near the river. So you have all oh, these yeah. river trips. I'm so jealous. It's <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.